The U.S. has estimated that about 10,000 North Korean personnel have been deployed to Russia. What effect are North Koreans likely to have on the war? Well, I'm former SEAL Team 6 Squadron Leader Chuck Farr, and this is the Kyiv Post Point of Impact. North Korean troops in Russia. North Korean troops are in Russia. Up to 8,000 North Korean troops have reached the Russian border. In the last week, the world's media has been focused on reports that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia and may soon enter into combat. Well, the truth is North Korean troops have been active in combat operations in Ukraine for almost a year. In November of 2023, North Korean forces first deployed into Ukraine. By December of that year, North Korean missileers in occupied Donetsk fired the first North Korean-made ballistic missiles at Ukrainian cities. Ukrainian intelligence has assessed that as many as 500 North Korean missile and security troops are already present in occupied Ukraine. Why are they there? Well, Russia needs the help. As Russian losses in Ukraine approach 700,000 casualties, and daily losses are often in excess of 1,000 troops, many observers see the Russian burn rate as unsustainable. This was the primary motivation for Putin to seek manpower and materiel help from North Korea. But let's call this request what it is, a desperate call for help. What do we know about the North Korean troops sent to Ukraine? 12,000 North Korean soldiers, roughly a division, are presently undergoing combat training in Russia. The North Korean units involved are primarily from the Special Purpose Forces, Special Operations Forces, and Light Infantry Troops. They're being trained in various locations, including Primorsky Krai, close to the North Korean border, Khabarovsk, in the Russian Far East, at Vladivostok, and Usurisk several other locations. Most significantly, North Korean troops are deployed to a newly established forward operating base in Kursk Oblast. This barracks complex is located about 50 kilometers north of the Ukrainian frontier. The importance and scale of North Korea's deployment can be judged by the number of generals it has sent to Russia to superintend the effort. They include General Kim Yong Chol, assessed to be an overall command of the North Korean Expeditionary Force. Formerly involved in nuclear negotiations, he previously commanded North Korean strategic missile forces. Next is Colonel General Kim Eun Bak, the commanding general of North Korean Special Forces. Colonel General Ri Chang Ho is the deputy chief of the general staff and head of the General Intelligence Bureau. General Pak Jong Chan who will oversee training and integration of North Korean units, he's going to be coordinating with Russian forces. At least three other general officers were also sent to Russia, indicating that North Korea's initial employment is likely to grow. How capable are the North Korean troops deployed to Russia? Well, it turns out they're a mixed bag. All North Koreans deployed to the war are considered elite. Elite, that is, for North Korea. The last large-scale ground combat engaged by the North Korean army was in the Korean War, which ended 70 years ago, almost a century. In many ways, the armed forces of the Hermit Kingdom are like a fossil trapped in amber. North Korean forces are armed and equipped with what are largely legacy weapons from the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. Their tactics and standard operational procedures are also predicated on Russian and Chinese experiences in the Korean War. These tactics, like their weapons, are dated, to say the least. To make matters worse, much of the training of North Korean soldiers is useless political indoctrination. Time is wasted studying the works of Korea's great leaders, often memorizing speeches and propaganda, subjects with have little to do 
with learning a military occupational specialty. Here we have manuscripts by Kim Il-sung. Great leader Kim Jong-il visited this place four times. As eager as Russia is for North Korean soldiers to enter combat, Russia has looked carefully at the quality of arriving North Korean units. They were not impressed. Moscow quickly decided that it would be necessary to undertake a major effort to redress training deficits and bring North Korean troops up to speed in the basics of 21st century warfare. Map reading and land navigation are just two critical skills lacked by North Korean troops. Access to maps and training in navigation is limited in North Korea. That's the thought that these skills would encourage soldiers to defect to South Korea. Russian advisors, interpreters, and liaison officers are essential to bridge these critical training gaps. They also add an extra layer of complexity to command, control, and interoperability, with literally no experience of the outside world. Are North Korean troops going to be willing to die for Putin in Ukraine? We'll see. The desertion of 18 North Korean troops in Kursk already signals underlying issues with morale or dissatisfaction stemming from the harsh realities of foreign deployment or resistance to morale-building efforts by condescending Russian advisors. This brings us to the deployment of North Korea's most effective units, their special operations forces. These include elements from the Reconnaissance General Bureau, which has a well-earned reputation for intelligence gathering and special operations capabilities. Their capabilities include long-range patrolling and infiltration, denied area operations, sabotage, and employing tactics that leverage surprise and unconventional methods. The deployment of North Korean special forces is important as Russia has burned through the majority of their own commandos and Spetsnaz troops who were squandered as the leading elements in meat wave attacks. North Korean special forces are believed to be deployed to a forward operations base in Kursk Oblast. As the Kim regime's most politically indoctrinated and reliable troops, North Korean special forces will be used to enforce discipline in North Korean ground units. Russia is keen to conceal or obscure North Korean deployments. They've already taken steps to disguise North Korea's presence in Kursk. It's known that North Korean troops are being issued with Russian uniforms and equipment. Ukraine intel has discovered that some North Korean troops have been provided with false identity documents, so they might pass as Russian citizens of the Buryat ethnic group. It hasn't fooled the South Koreans. In Seoul last week, South Korea summoned the Russian ambassador to demand that North Korean troops be removed from Russia. If this demand is not met, South Korea said it will reconsider its policies regarding the provision of lethal aid to Ukraine. Unlike North Korea, South Korea designs and manufactures some of the best weapon systems in the world, including tanks, armored vehicles, artillery systems, and missiles. Having South Korea in your corner is a lot better than having North Korea as an ally. Will North Korea's entry into the war prove decisive? It's unlikely. A few weeks of Russian training isn't likely to turn malnourished, undertrained North Koreans into super soldiers. A 70-year gap in combat experience and training is an almost insurmountable handicap. Language issues will also limit the performance of North Korean troops in complex military evolutions. Until their training and integration into Russian formations is complete, North Korean combat effectiveness will be low.
some North Korean soldiers will realize that a deployment to Ukraine is their best opportunity for freedom. But, as Stalin said, quantity has a quality all of its own. North Korean bodies, willing or unwilling, can definitely be expected to add mass to Russian meat wave attacks. North Korean troops will likely make their combat debut in Kursk, possibly soon. But there's a lot more to winning a war than charging headlong into enemy fire. One thing is certain. North Korean troops will learn some painful lessons on the Ukrainian battlefield. Hey, for the Kiev Post, I'm Navy SEAL Chuck Farr, and I'll see you again at the point of impact.